This video was edited by AJ Analysis, a link to his channel will be in the description below. How Ancelotti's tactics played into PSG's hands, how Pochettino's extremely aggressive pressing was the key to PSG controlling the game, and how Kylian Mbappe was able to make the difference all coming up in this video. I will be creating a playlist with all the videos I make analysing the Champions League games, I'll leave it linked in the description below and when those videos are out check the playlist and you'll find them there. So from the start of the game we were able to see where the pattern of the game was going to go as Real Madrid set off in an extremely passive 4-5-1 shape, not pressing aggressively and instead dropping off and allowing PSG centre backs to move the ball into the final third. Even in the middle third Real Madrid's midfield line was still sitting very deep, not moving out to close down the space in front of them. But before I go any further, for cheap good quality football jerseys, retro jerseys and tracksuits go over to www.jerseykeeper.com. I myself have bought a number of different jerseys from Jersey Fever, including this 2003-2004 Manchester United shirt with Ronaldo on the back and this one's probably my favourite so if you want a shirt like this be sure to click the link in the description below and use code Atlantis Football with a space to get 5% off. In possession Pochettino's 4-3-3 system became a 3-3-4 shape with Danilo Pereira dropping into a right sided centre back position creating a back three with Marquinhos and Kimpembe which in turn allowed the two fullbacks, Mendes and Hakimi, to push extremely far up the pitch, allowing Di Maria and Mbappe to move in field and Messi to drop off from the forward line. The reason for these tactical moves was that by having three at the back in possession, PSG not only had a base wider than a two to circulate the ball around Benzema and provide the defensive security at the back to allow the fullbacks to push forward, but it would also provide Cruz and Modric, the two Real Madrid central midfielders ahead of Casemiro, with a dilemma of whether to move out and close close down Kimpembe and Pereira as they moved forward with the ball or hold their position and close off the space in behind them. They decided on the latter and subsequently this meant that Real Madrid's midfield line sat incredibly deep even in their own half allowing PSG to push them back and dominate possession in their half. Real Madrid likely decided to go for this extremely passive defensive shape in order to not just allow them to hold a deeper defensive line, stopping space emerging for Mbappe to run in behind into, but also minimising the space between the lines. And this was probably why we saw Messi dropping so deep in the game, playing more as a central midfielder than even a false nine, picking up the ball in front of the Real Madrid midfield line and looking to create with long passes over the Real Madrid defensive line for either the two fullbacks runs or Mbappe. But because of this conservatism, PSG were able to dominate not just possession, having 57% of the ball, but also the attacking opportunities in the game, having 21 shots to Real Madrid's free and recording an XG of 1.75, with Real recording just 0.14, showing clearly how dominant PSG were. However, this didn't just stem from Real Madrid's lack of pressing, but also from PSG nullifying Real Madrid in possession. With their pressing, PSG defended in a 4-3-3 shape in the middle third. However, in Madrid's build-up phase, we saw PSG use an aggressive, man-to-man -man orientated pressing system, with every PSG player on the pitch being designated with a Real Madrid player to pressurise. Pochettino instructed Mendes and Hakimi to push higher up the pitch, ready to pressurise Carvajal and Mendy, and because this would have left PSG's two centre-backs up against Real Madrid's front three, he also instructed Danilo Pereira to drop back into a right-sided centre-back position to mark Vinicius. Marquinhos was prepared to follow Benzema when he dropped off deep with Kimpembe on Asensio and PSG's frontline players were also very disciplined and organised in their pressure which was key to stopping Real Madrid playing out. Here we see that PSG have reverted to a conventional four at the back with the two fullbacks in position this time but Verratti and Danilo are positioned extremely high up the pitch with Danilo following Cruz into a deep position and Verratti simultaneously being prepared to press the centre backs was also cutting off the passing lanes into Casemiro. As as Di Maria also applied the pressure while cutting the passing lane to Mindy. This was just one example but throughout the game PSG were fantastic and not just pressing aggressively but also positioning themselves in a way to cut off the forward passing options and because their midfield line was so high it practically suffocated Real Madrid in their own defensive third leaving them little other option but to look for long balls upfield most of which would just give the ball back to PSG. Whilst Ancelotti sacrificed the space in front of his midfield line to close off the space behind it Pochettino did the reverse, sacrificing the space between his defensive and midfield line so that Real Madrid had little space in those deeper midfield positions where Cruz and Modric liked to drop into and this was extremely effective at stopping Madrid progressing the ball forward. 
but the key in this game was of course Kylian Mbappe, who played half as a centre forward, half as a left sided attacker, being given the freedom to drift over to that left side when he saw fit, and often we would see him positioned between Carvajal and Militao, causing Madrid's backline problems. When he would drift inside, this would drag Carvajal inside, creating more space for Nuno Mendes to overlap into, and this allowed PSG to funnel the ball over to the left side, where Mendes was able to put crosses into the box, completing the most crosses of any player in this game. Within 5 minutes of the game, Mbappe was causing Carvajal problems. Messi drops deep to receive the ball and Mbappe instantly looks to make a run in behind. Messi's weight of pass is perfect and Mbappe's scuffed shot is saved by Courtois. Here for the penalty you can see he's pulled out to the left side, receives the ball, isolates Carvajal in a one on one and drives down the line and gets brought down, giving PSG the penalty from where Messi's strike would be saved by Courtois. But in the last minute of the game Neymar's back heel allowed Mbappe to stand up Vasquez and Militao and his absolute world class play as he glides past both of them with insane acceleration before slotting the ball under Courtois to win the game. So overall, Pochettino's aggressive pressing was key to stopping Real Madrid gaining a foothold in the game, with Ancelotti's passivity playing into PSG's hands, but it was Kylian Mbappe who was ultimately the man who made the difference. So thank you for watching, if you enjoyed that video subscribe to the channel, click the bell for notifications and check the description for some of my other videos as well.